Hey everybody, final thoughts time for Biblios, Quill, and Parchment. But before I get to that, please remember this was a paid Kickstarter preview for one of the four games in the Dr. Finn 2021 game collection that's on Kickstarter right now. And with that out of the way, I love Biblios. I think it's amazing, and uh, it, you know, I, I it's I almost feel bad for designer Steve Finn that so early in his career he made such an unparalleled, unrivaled masterpiece of just nail-biting card tension. And um, while he did do a Biblios dice game a few years ago that was definitely interesting, and Jen and I enjoyed it, it was a very different thing. Um, it did not necessarily recreate the you know the highs and lows and the tension and the flow of Biblios, but Biblios Quill and Parchment, which had also been called Biblios Roll and Write, it comes a lot closer, and Jen and I like it a lot. A lot, a lot. It's uh, broken down into two phases, like the original. The first half of the game, where we are using our dice to harvest stuff and get ourselves into position for the all-important second half. Because in the second half, we go into a repeated blind bidding game. Um, and we have to use the resources we harvested in the first half to be able to get at the stuff in the second half, which is significantly more valuable. Both games follow that same overall structure, but in the in original Biblios, where you are using cards, and the uh, the you know the first half of the game is this I pick, I choose, where I have to draw cards every round when I'm the lead player. One of which will go to me. One of which will go to my opponents or depending on how many opponents there are, and one of which will go into a pot that represents what we can get in the second half. Um, and I gotta say, folks. So incredibly smart. That design choice, one of the coolest decisions you will ever find yourself making uh, in a board game. That has been replaced here with simultaneous rolling, where we all roll, and then, you know, often it'll be, well, boy, I'm really not happy with that roll. That didn't work out very well. So clearly, I want to re-roll that and that. Can't do that. I get two rerolls, and I either have to reroll only one die at a time or everything. So that is a tough choice. It is often, uh, do I mean, but you know, four of my six dice are good to great. I'd be throwing potentially a lot away, but man, if I could just reroll this one dice, it could be a huge windfall for me. Um, but I mean, but really, I want to reroll these two. But the other thing, it's not only just you, you're thinking about what you yourself have, you have to look at what everybody else has. Because at the end of the day, the lion's share of your points are going to come at the end of the game from how far we have worked our way up the scribe tracks in the, on the five different disciplines. And um, the, it is definitely 100% a race. So you might say, oh, well, you know, I'm still perfectly happy to work on this, except, oh, you are so far ahead of me on that, I don't think I'm ever going to catch up with you. So maybe now I want to reroll that too. But I could still come in second place on it, maybe. Because, by the way, uh, Biblios Cool and Parchment has a phenomenal two-player variant, which, again, I demonstrated in the run-through. You can go check it out. Uh, really a great way to keep tension between not just my opponent, but the virtual opponent who is racing me for second place. And, um, you know, so often I will... You know, or if we're neck and neck and we're both about to finish Herbology, and, you know, it could be either one of us and a round where neither of us rolled the herbs. And I'm like... Okay, should I reroll everything? Because if I can just get one more herb, I will cross that line and beat you to it. But you didn't get any herbs either. Are you going to do that? Or are you going to live with it? Are you going to let me have it? So, it's a different kind of tension, but it is definitely an interesting one where your decision is made as much about what I want to do for myself, but also what I need to do based on what you might do. And so, it's not as tension-filled as the original Biblios, but it is a lot of fun. And it's also, as a, as a huge uh, step up from Biblios, very fast because the uh, the first I mean this game easily takes place in half the time because so much of it is simultaneous simultaneous reveal what we're going to re-roll simultaneous resolving of stuff uh, simultaneous blind bid in the auctions and all the rest of it this game goes by at a super fast clip I could probably play this three times uh, a full satisfying game in the same time it would take me w to play one full game of Biblios so that's a huge feather in its cap as far as I or a huge quill in its um, chapeau um, but then we get to the second half, which again, like Biblios, is all in, in original Biblios, players had been setting aside some cards to be able to grab later in the auctions. Here, um, but I mean, the interesting thing, I mean, I would almost say this is superior 
Because if there's one thing I don't like about Biblios, it has a healthy memory uh, memory element. Because I got to remember, right, what, what did I put in the pot? Has it come out yet? Should I save my money to bid later or should I go for it now? I so appreciate this is so much more attractive that every round in the second half, four times, we're going to reroll all of these dice and there will always be situations where, oh my god, that row is so much better than that row. Do I think I can get it? I have to throw money away to do it, and um, and I can see, and you know, everything's out in the open. It's not so much about trying to remember what's come before and all that. I can see how much money you still have to bid. I don't know what's coming in your deck. I mean, and and, and I honestly think the second half of this game, because again, bidding for three or potentially four dice, being able to willing to give up one, two, three points to be able to get that line that could push me, uh, you know, give me two, three, four, five, six points. That gets very, very tension-filled and very, very exciting because of all the different, um, you know, not only the dice that came out, but the powers. Maybe I don't want the best one because I'd really rather get one more step so I can reach the final city and get 10 points. Because you only get eight rounds in this game to try to get a lot of stuff done, and you will. But man, it comes at you like a freight train. Um, you know, the end of this game is you're just desperately trying to get one more religion scribe or one more step on the pilgrimage road or whatever it might be. Or just one more step up the altar. Oh man, uh, this game works great. Jan, I love it. And if all that weren't enough, folks, as I said right up front, I was demoing for you the basic version of the game. These are two-sided boards. And as is this. And these change significantly. Uh, let me tell you about the chapel first. Basically, in the base game, you know, we've got the place where we store all of our dice and we get these particular bonuses. In the uh, more elaborate game, different combinations of dice are available and more powerful. Move up to three steps, um, you know, uh, for example, or move on the uh, chapel. But, um, you know, three books, two books in a movement, one book in a movement, two movement books. So there's definitely more variety here. And this particular of being able to move one, two, or three steps, if you take the bottom row, you might think, why would I ever want that? I would never take that. Well, folks, um, that is because the road traveled gets much more interesting. Whereas before, it was this preset road, which is a couple of you know uh, branching diversions. Now, it is a grid where we start out here, and if I move two, I would move one, two. And hey, I would get some um, you know, philosophy. And if I, if I was desperate to get more, um, what do you call it, the... Uh, Astrology. Well, I could move one, and then on the next turn, I'm going to go two, three. What if I want to get over, and you know, I, I want to desperately grab, um, you know, that religion right there, but I end up getting a three. If I go one, two, three. I've completely missed it because I have to stop and I have to land on these spaces. And once I've moved through them, I can't go again. So you have a lot more flexibility and freedom um, how you are going to explore the world in your pilgrimage in the full game. And the bidding gets even more engaging with all these different choices you have. And so, while I just wanted to show the basic version of the game, it gets even cooler uh, when, you, when you play the full version of the game. And no matter what, either way... Biblios Quill and Parchment is phenomenal. I don't have a bad thing to say about it. I think it works perfectly. It's super fast. It's super fluid. It is one of the most fun rolling rights I've played in quite a while. And that was the preview, folks. Thanks so much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye.